People often wanna know how I achieve such high quality videos and audio because this is exactly what my videos look like when I'm posting them on socials, but also what my webinars look like, what my Teams meetings look like, what my standard Zoom meetings look like, even if I'm talking to colleagues, not just what I'm putting out there publicly as well, because I believe we should have really high quality setups. We're not in our office as much anymore. We're not driving different places. So to my mind, the least we can do is make sure that this interaction is as high quality as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through my setup here. I'm gonna talk you through my equipment, how I position the room and various things so that you can hopefully take some of these ideas to improve your setup as well. Ready? Here we go. So just a couple of things on what you're seeing here before I take you on a tour and go into the specifics. So I've got kind of a nice background there that is blurry, so it's a, a nice shallow depth of field. So I pop, I should stand out, and the background, it's a real background, it's real. Um, uh, should be blurry, but it should be nice as well. I have the mic in shot. I think that I kind of like that aesthetic. That's entirely up to you. You don't have to have that, but I think it kind of anchors me here and shows me here. If I was doing a video for, for socials, I might not do it, but certainly for Teams meetings, Zooms and things like that, I want to see that. It's a nice quality mic. It shows people that I care. Like it's the equivalent of turning up to a meeting and making sure your shoes are shiny, right? So it's a, it's a way of showing that you care about the setup and the, the quality etc. I'm kind of this far from the camera. I don't like it when I see people kind of in this position on the screen. It looks like they're about to drop out or even lower. Like if you imagine a line that's a third that goes along the, the screen here, I want my eye line to be there on the third and I either want to be central or on the other third this way if I was going to, I need to move the mic as well, but if I was to move myself over. So that's kind of a bit of a look um, about myself. In terms of my clothes, you want something that doesn't stand out too much, like checks or things like that, so you kind of want to consider your clothes. Maybe I should have had a shave today, I don't know. Uh, but kind of how you look is important and how you turn it up and the lighting as well, which I'll show you. But in, in terms of the aesthetics here, this is kind of what I'm going for, the distance from the mic and, the, and from the camera. This would be too far away, I'm showing too much body here. This would be too close, no one wants to see me in HD like that. So this is kind of head and shoulders, a nice positioning on the camera, right? Let's dive into the details. So I'm gonna take you on tour with this and kind of show this view and everything else going on in the room as well, right? So this is the view that you've been seeing through the camera, which is back here. Um, and I wanna kind of show you that the room's a bit of a, of a mess, to be honest. There's things everywhere. Uh, and the reason for me showing you that is, it, it doesn't matter. So long as this view looks good, you can have other things everywhere. So it's actually really easy, I think, to make a bit of any room look nice through a camera. It doesn't matter what else is going on. No one gets to see it, right? So first of all, I've got a Rode microphone here. This is a really high quality microphone, but you wanna be spending upwards of 100 pounds on a good quality microphone. This is a mic stand I've got here, which prevents any vibration. So as you're moving about, if it if it uh, wobbles, it doesn't bang on the sides. And then I've got a stand here um, that uh, just clips onto the desk. What you'll notice here, and this is another thing about my setup, is I do most of my podcasts and webinars standing up. I just think you can get so much more energy into it and so much more movement. This whole setup, as you can see on this stand here, is what I've got for my raised setup, but you can lower this down if you're doing a seated thing. And so everything just drops down the notch and the background works perfectly well uh, for that setup. But I like doing video stood up. So like I say, you can bring a lot more energy to it. So you'll notice that I don't have a conventional webcam. I'm certainly not using the camera in the computer, but I don't even have like a Logitech or something like that. I've got an actual uh, digital SLR here, which is a Canon. I'll put the specifics on the screen so you can see what model it is. They do a nice range, all of which can be hooked up to the computer, and it gives you this really high definition look. So you're in focus and you have this shallow depth of field, so the background's blurry. When you look at me on the screen, and, you, and I'm telling you, when people see this, they will say, wow, that looks good. They will, they will be taken aback by the quality of this. When you, in, I mean, this camera's like 500 quid, right? But to my mind, it's worth spending that on it because people will comment on it. If, if what you're saying is a value, if you want it to be kind of immortalized in video forevermore for people to see in years to come, right? 
at least spend a lot of money on the tech to make you look as good as possible and sound as good as possible. So to my mind, it's a real worthwhile investment. Um, and as you can see here, I have the screen pointing towards myself so I can see what I look like. And I try to stare into the camera lens because that's your eyes looking back at me. So you'll see the difference on here. If I look at the screen on the camera, this is where my eyes go. If I look into the lens, I'm actually looking at you. And then if I look down to the screen, you'll see my eyes drop here. So you, you really wanna be staring into the actual lens if I wanna be looking at you. The only thing you need then to hook the camera into the computer is this here, which is an Elgato cam link. Um, that's the only thing required uh, that goes into a HMI into USB, I think it is and then into USB-C, I've got another connector there, but it's that Elgato HDMI link that you need that takes this high quality image and actually gets it onto the computer. So the two key things here are high quality camera, high quality audio, and those two things are really essential. I'm going for a standing up view, um, and now let me take you into lighting next, should we have a look at? So, lighting. This ring light here, I find to be good to get a nice uh, glow here on my face to light me up from a frontal position here. I've got a side light here that you can see that's uh, when you're on this screen um, is just lighting up this side of my face. At the back here, we have another one that's set to be a little bit brighter. You can have this more, it's, it's set up, it's funneling the light here as you can see, and that's to light the, the side of my head. So you see this glow here on my face, this panel, what it does, it kind of gives you this bit of a glow and it picks you off the background. So if you, I've been very interviewed in like, I've been very interested in interview styles and watching the lighting of them. So they'll always have a light uh, behind you to give you this halo effect. And it helps to, you know, you can just see it glancing off my shoulders as well. It helps to pick you off the background. And then I have this one other light down here that I'm using to light up the background. I don't need to use that if I turn that off. Um, then you'll see the background will darken. Um, I do have that one little light it's there in the corner, which is a little mouse holding that. Oh, lighting up my book, best-selling author, James Ashford, hello. Uh, but the reason why I have that there is just a bit of interest in the background. So again, I don't have to have the background lit up, but I kind of like the aesthetics of the books and the various items on there. I think it kind of communicates a bit of something about me rather than just being a boring background. The other thing then to note about this room is acoustically dampening the room. The hardest thing, and in fact, when I say hard, it's actually impossible, is to remove the echo of, um, of, of audio. You can do a lot to tidy it up. You can take background noise out. If there were like trucks going past and stuff, you can actually remove that noise fairly straightforward. The thing you can't remove is echo, and echo makes it sound awful in audio. That nice dull sound is what makes it, when you hear a podcast, sound really cool. So what I do is I dampen the room with uh, acoustic panels. So on the ceiling here, uh, I've got four acoustic panels. Um, and so I've got one somewhere to show you. Um, so it's kind of a material fabric here. And then on the back of it, it's kind of a, a felt, but it's very thick. Uh, they're, they're specifically bought for this reason for acoustic dampening. Um, so that's what I have there. So I have those on the ceiling. I have four on the wall normally. Uh, so these are vertical acoustic panels. They come in different colors. so They can actually look quite nice. But if you see, I've actually just put them up there because when I do a standing up video, you just see the top of the of the bookcase when I'm standing up. Uh, when I'm sat down, you don't see that, so I don't need them on there, so I can have them all back on the wall. Um, but I've got them up there uh, just to kind of cover the the, uh, the air conditioning unit that's hidden behind it. I'll set it be a proper behind the scenes here. So this is one of the acoustic panels here, but I'll just show you me. They just I've just put these hooks on the back here so I can easily take them on and off, and then I've got hooks on the wall there. There you go, I've got them back on there now. So it's quite a nice aesthetic. Like I say, they come in different colors, different sizes. So I have acoustic dampening here. I have acoustic paneling on the side. And the other thing to look, that I'm gonna show you is around the top, I've got curtain hooks. So I've got curtains here. And so if I'm doing a big, uh, I don't know, lots of talking or something, I want it to be really, really high quality, I will fully dampen the room acoustically it blocks out a bit of noise from outside as well, um, but it also uh, just completely removes all the echo. So I'll just show you that very briefly as well. So there you go, you can see, I've just started to put one of the curtains up there, but they actually go all the way around the room and across that wall as well. 
if you are going to put anything anywhere because you really want to dampen it, you want it in front because as you're talking here, the sound is hitting the ceiling and it's hitting that back wall. So if you wanted to dampen something, just having something behind the camera would be really useful. The other thing you see here is I've got a whiteboard there uh, behind the screen. So most of the things I do are unscripted and off the cuff. Occasionally, I'll just need to know a few bullet points or the structure of a presentation or something. And so, what's that? Key person influence, I think it's saying up there. So that was my intro to Daniel Priestley when I um, had him on our webinar recently. So I'll have some, just some bullet points down. So you'll see they're just to the side of the camera. So I can stand here and be looking at what's there and people don't even know that I'm looking away. So as I'm talking, Keep it, so Daniel Priestley's books are Key Person of Influence, Oversubscribe, 24 Assets, Entrepreneur Revolution, Scorecard Marketing. So I'm just glancing over here um, and it's not too distracting when I'm talking as well. Let me just show you some specific brands that I bought. I'm not sponsored by any of these, but I just find them to be useful brands, good quality brands. So I use the newer stuff for the, the lighting stands and for the lights themselves. They're just really good quality. They've served me very well. You can see they're battered because they've been in and out of the car in various places and the barn door's fallen off that. But anyway, there we go. They work really well. I've had them for many years and they're pretty cheap. Um, I'm not quite sure what this lighting... Oh, that's newer as well. So again, that's what I use there. I love the Manfrotto um, tripods. I hate flimsy tripods. These are so sturdy. Again, I can take it anywhere. It's got a nice height on it. I insist that any camera that I've got being filmed from a, on a tripod is above my jawline so I don't get my double chin in it. So I like a nice high um, tripod looking down at me slightly versus looking up because that is certainly not my best angle. So the Manfrotto ones have this great height. They're so robust. You do not want a wobbly camera. That is everything I use, guys, to achieve this setup. It works re really well for me. People compliment me on it. I've done many, many podcasts. I've been interviewed many times. And every time I go on, they will say, can you come and do an audio test for us? Can you do a visual test? I'm like, yeah, fair enough. And I turn on, turn up, and I do this. And they're like, wow, that's really good. You're ready to rock. And I am ready to rock. This stays set up like this all of the time. So today, I've done a podcast this morning. I've got a webinar this evening. But I know this room is ready for me to go so I can come in and just get to, get to work. Um, we're not traveling as much. You know, we, we do much more work online. We're talking online. We're producing videos, team meetings, webinars, various other things. And just as if you were turning up to a meeting, you would turn up looking the part, being smart, wearing nice shoes, maybe having your car clean, turn up in a nice car, presenting yourselves well, a nice bag, whatever it is that you may have to position yourself as an expert, to look the part, um, then I think we should invest that in the technology and in the setup that we have because this is where people are seeing us. This is the window into our world. And I think it shows respect to the people that are talking to us, that we're bothered about how we come over and that we want to communicate in the very best way. But also because video does capture us and it will be around for a long time and you will be watching videos of yourself perhaps in the future, if what you're saying is worth talking about and worth other people listening to, then what you should be doing is investing in making sure it sounds the very best it can so that people can enjoy your message without thinking, what's that in the background? Why aren't they tired of the washing away? I wonder what will happen if I take the blur filter off. Why are they? Why can't I see them very well? Who's that ringing the doorbell? Why, can't, why are they crackling all the time? Why, why is it really echoey? Because the moment they're distracted with all those other things, they're not focusing on what you're saying, which is ultimately the point of doing this, so you can communicate your messages in the strongest way possible. Hope that helps.